you've been through Why you got scars Since you walked through the door I've been trying to reach you Cause I feel you What's the story to tell? What's the story behind? The mountain you're trying to climb Think of her What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, or if you're brand new here and this is the very first time you ever see on my face, what's up? I am Jen, I share all things health and wellness here on the channel. Anything I do to level up my own life, I share with you guys in hopes to inspire and motivate you to do the same. So if that sounds like your jam, make sure to subscribe before we jump into today's video. All right guys, as you can tell from the title, we have another what's for dinner video coming at you. We have five easy meals this go round and they are all absolutely delicious. You guys know like simple, easy, but not compromising on taste or health is my jam so that's what I filmed for you guys if it has made it to any of these videos then you know that I absolutely loved the way that it turned out because if something was garbage I definitely wouldn't even put it in the video so all of these turned out amazing and included is the crock pot barbecue meatballs that everybody was going crazy about over on Instagram and wanted to see so that is in this video as well and they are all low carb high protein healthy delicious meals if you guys try any of these let me know down below also the chicken capers baked dish that I made the beginning footage got deleted somehow where I kind of go over explaining what I am making and showing all the ingredients and all of that it like jumped straight to me already cooking the dish but I did include for each of the meals the recipe that I have made in carb manager which is the food tracking app that I use I create the recipe in there and it shows everything that I put in it however keep in mind that I don't track seasonings I don't measure them when I'm putting them into my recipes I never have that's just not the kind of cook that I am I just pour until my heart is content and so I I don't track any of the seasonings anyways most of them are very minuscule if any calories or any of that so I just don't worry about it I've always had success with yummy meals and my fitness journey so just keep that in mind I do always show the seasonings that I use however I just don't track them and they aren't included in the recipe screenshots that I include at the end of each meal so just keep that in mind as you are watching but without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the meals okay so excuse the loud TV in the background but here's what we have going on for dinner tonight I have made this in a while so I figured I'd go ahead and film it for you guys because it's gonna be super quick and easy to throw together you know that's my jam and I love to share those with you so I have two packs of the boneless center cut pork chops that I got from Aldi's and I'm getting ready to take these out I'm gonna season them up with some of the Badia chopped onion flakes Badia complete seasoning and also the Redmond's real salt organic garlic pepper the stuff is bomb and I'm gonna season them up really good and I'm going to sear them really quick in my Dutch oven, my very old and loved Dutch oven, as you can tell. I'm gonna put a little bit of avocado oil on the bottom of this and get it nice and hot and then I'm gonna sear them just to get a nice sear on each side and then I am going to throw some onions. I'm getting ready to cut this onion up. I'm gonna throw some onions on there and then I'm gonna dump in this can of Campbell's 98% fat-free cream of mushroom soup, 60 calories a serving, one gram protein. I'm also going to make up some sliced mushrooms, but I'm not going to add them in with the pork chops because the fam is not huge on mushrooms. This they can handle because it's not a ton and they're not real big, but I'll cook these on the side for myself and then just add that on top. And then I'm also going to pair it with some cut green beans and it will be delicious. After I sear these in the Dutch oven, I'm going to pop them in the oven for about 30, 45 minutes just till they get really tender and falling apart. So I have my pork chops all seasoned up here and I just did them right in their container just like this and then I'll put the season side down and I'll hit the other side with some of this avocado oil which is what I also have in the bottom of this Dutch oven getting hot and then I'll season the other side just to not dirty up more dishes and all of that you guys know I'm all about simplicity here and then I have 208 grams of onion that I've chopped up and weighed here and once I get these brown like I want on each side I'm not cooking them through I just want a good sear on each side I'll throw in the onions the cream and mushroom soup and then we'll throw the lid on the Dutch oven and pop it in the oven and I have my oven preheating at 350 as you can see it's nice and hot it has a beautiful sizzle going on now i'm gonna season the top side absolutely perfect brown sear just like i want i don't know if you guys can even tell because of the steam but can we just appreciate the beauty of all those brown bits and onions this is about to be the most flavorful quickest awesomest dish ever now i'm gonna dump the soup on and it'll be ready to rock and roll each stage just looks better and better now I'm going to throw the lid on and pop it in the oven for about 30, 45 minutes. And here is the finished product and how gorgeous does that look? 
the sauce turned out perfect i did the mushrooms like i said just sauteed them up on the side because the fam is not like too keen on a bunch of mushrooms and i just did the onion sauce on there it absolutely turned out beautiful looking and they are tender and falling apart just paired it with the sweet potato here and the cut green beans and that is an awesome delicious dinner coming in at right over 500 calories okay so i have the chicken here i just pulled it out and put it to the side it's brown just like i wanted and i threw some onions in here just soften them down brown them up a little bit now i've just added my garlic i'm going to stir this in for a good 30 seconds or so until you can really smell that garlic coming through and then i have all my tomatoes already cut up here i'm going to add my tomatoes and my capers in and then we'll add the chicken back in i'm also going to add a few drops of this monk fruit extract a lot of the recipes that i saw called for honey and just to not use it you could add honey um, if you wanted to but just to cut on the calories and carbs and stuff a little bit I'm gonna throw some of that in there. I mean somebody stop me. I don't even know if that color is pulling up on camera I mean, I'm feeling like a chef up in here. Yes, please and it's smelling bomb.com So I've got my onions my capers my garlic I added some of the monk fruit, the tomatoes, the chicken. I have it on low now. I'm just going to pop the lid on and let it do its thing for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And we'll be ready to plate this baby up. And here is this deliciousness all plated up. That just turned it out looking absolutely delish can't wait to tear this baby up but I paired it with some creamer potatoes here and some broccoli and I just topped the broccoli with some of the Gaines Bakery sweet poppy sauce and this entire meal is coming in at a whopping 361 calories how amazing is that I'll let you guys know how this turned out so here's what we have going on for dinner tonight I am making Felicia Keithley's chicken stroganoff recipe I will link her original YouTube video down below where I got the idea for this recipe I am switching up just a couple little things nothing major but I'll go over what I am using here I have some chicken breast tenderloins that I'm getting ready to cut up in bite-sized chunks I have a bunch of baby bella mushrooms here that I just roughly chopped up I have two bags here because I had two in the freezer, so I'm going to go ahead and use up what was left in this one, and then I'll probably end up using the rest of all of it because you need like four cups of spinach, and you guys know when you cook spinach down, it literally goes down to nothing. I always buy fresh spinach and then freeze it. I hate chopping spinach like more than anything, and when you do it this way, once it is frozen, you literally can just crumble it in the bag, and it breaks it right apart, and you don't have to chop it and have it everywhere, and I like just fresh spinach frozen better but that's personal preference. Also going to cover the chicken in this batty of complete seasoning. The pasta that I am using is this Bonza Rotini made from chickpeas pasta. It's 22 grams protein, 8 grams fiber. There are the macros there and ingredients as well. And I have four and a half ounces of it here and I, the water's already boiling. I'm getting ready to throw it in. And then I also have some onions here that I chopped up. I'm just sauteing them down a little bit and then I'm gonna throw the chicken in there and brown it up real nice and then we'll add the veggies next. So I have added the mushrooms and the spinach and cooked them down exactly where I want. Now I'm getting ready to add two containers of this low fat good culture cottage cheese. You can add whatever cottage cheese that you would like. And my protein pasta is ready and I'm going to throw that in as well. I also went ahead and threw in some batty of chopped onion flakes and some organic garlic pepper just because why not. So now I'm going to mix all this up and it will be ready to go. I wish y'all could smell this right now. The level of creaminess that that cottage cheese gave. I know it might sound weird but I mean it smells so delicious and is like perfectly creamy. I'll let you guys know how it is as soon as I plate it up and taste it. And here is all of its deliciousness and its glory all plated up nice and creamy and delicious I've already tasted it. it turned out really good just paired it with some broccoli there topped it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese five grams of Parmesan cheese it was just a little bit and all of this is coming in at 457 calories and 60 grams of protein yes please here's what we have going on for dinner tonight we are making barbecue meatballs in the crock pot it's going to be relatively easy and once you put it in the crock pot you just kind of leave it and forget it and it's going to be delicious i am doing it a little different i think i've shown how i make my crock pot meatballs in past what's for dinner videos but i'm gonna do this one a little different just to save time and kind of experiment and see how it is i am not going to pan 
pan fry them first. I usually pan fry the outside just to get like a nice crispy coating. If you guys have followed me, you know I'm huge on texture and mushy food is just not a vibe for me. So I always like to get stuff like a good crispy outside layer and then cook it through. Most all my meat I do that way. However, today I am just going to throw these straight in the crock pot and let them cook and pray for a good result because I've never done that before. So hopefully they're not just all like soggy and mush without having that nice crispiness that also adds an extra layer of flavor too. But just as a time saver, I am going to throw them straight in the crock pot today. I have a little over two pounds here of 90% lean, 10% fat ground beef. In it, I'm going to, of course, add my Badia complete seasoning because you guys know that's my jam. Badia chopped onion flakes, some grated Parmesan cheese. These breadcrumbs I got from Winn-Dixie. I actually just looked it up because I filmed it in a grocery haul a few weeks back and they have good macros and killer ingredients as you can see there i compared the panko breadcrumbs to these and the ingredients list is insane i actually pulled it up on my phone here because i compared it in the grocery haul as you can see there's just a few things in the ingredients here and that list of ingredients it's just nuts they have the same macros but the ingredients are like night and day different so this brand that i am using today it's called pope simply better and i got it at Win dixie and that's what I'm going to be using like a quarter or half a cup and I did create a recipe on Carb Manager so once I do like the final measurements after I make everything I will show you guys the exact macros. I'm also using some G Hue sugar free barbecue sauce. All three of these have the exact same macros and these were in my fridge just already open. I'm not sure how much I'm going to use so I just pulled them all out and I will weigh them up as I go along. And then of course, two eggs, and I'm just gonna mix all this up together, roll the meatballs, and throw them in the crock pot. I mean, look at these buttes. Aren't these gorgeous? I absolutely love meatballs so much. I hit the bottom of the crock pot just with a very light spray of avocado oil just because these are a little less fat, which it will render off its own fat and not stick, but just because I'm putting the barbecue sauce in there, I thought I hit the bottom really quick. With the avocado oil, now I have them in there. Now I'm just going to plop this entire crock pot on my scale so that I can add the barbecue sauce and add that into carb manager and then we will put this on low and let it cook for about six hours or so until it's time for dinner. It's a little dark over here where I have the crock pot but you can see I just covered it with some of the G Hughes barbecue sauce. Now I am going to set the crock pot on low for six hours, pop on the lid and forget about it. And dinner is all plated up and looking delicious. It looks all dark coming on camera, but these turned out absolutely amazing. And they got crispy on top without even having to pan fry them. So I'll let you guys know how they are after I taste them. They have had the whole house smelling absolutely delicious. Paired it with a sweet potato here, put two grams of butter on there, and then have some whole kernel corn here. And dinner is done and looking absolutely delicious. Here's what we have going on for dinner tonight, guys. We are making some sandwiches salmon cakes. I think that I may have shown these before um, in a what's for dinner a long time ago. I'm not really sure though. So I figured I'd go ahead and show it again because I am switching up a couple things. So I have one can of wild Alaskan pink salmon here, one egg. I have some of the Pope Simply Better breadcrumbs. Super good macros. These are the ones I've been using. I picked up from Winn-Dixie, 100 calories a serving for a quarter cup. One gram fat, 24 carbs, zero protein. Gonna throw in some Parmesan cheese, of course. Going to use some light mayonnaise. Gonna add some roasted garlic, rosemary, and sea salt spice blend, and some Badia chopped onion flakes. I'm just gonna mix all of this up together in a bowl, then I'm gonna patty them out and put them in the fridge for probably 30 minutes or an hour or so, and then I'll show you when we go to fry them up. I have the salmon cakes all pattied up here. It made six of them, which will be three servings. Two of them are one serving. So I ended up using the whole can of the Alaskan pink salmon. I used 42 grams of Parmesan cheese. I used 32 grams of the breadcrumbs, 51 grams of the mayo, and I don't measure seasonings in anything. So I just do those till my heart's content. I'm gonna pop these in the fridge for about 
probably 45 minutes and then I'll come back and fry them up in just a little bit of avocado oil and they will be good to go. These have been in the fridge for about an hour now. I just pulled them out. I've got some avocado oil heating up in this pan here and I'm just going to fry them for about four or five minutes on each side. Get them nice and crispy and cooked through and then I will show you as soon as I plate them. Dinner is done, and there are the salmon cakes, nice and crispy like I like them. I made some homemade tartar sauce here. I just do light mayo with dill relish, and then I add a little bit of monk fruit extract. You can add sweet relish if you want, and that will give it that sweet little hint, um, but I use just regular dill relish and then add these monk fruit extract drops, and then I paired it with some fresh broccoli that I baked in the oven and a sweet potato here. And it is looking and smelling absolutely delish. All right, guys. So that is a wrap for this What's for Dinner video. I had five meals in this one. I try to do at least four or five new meals in each of these videos. So it gives you guys quite a few different ideas to maybe throw into your dinner rotation. I actually already have a few different dinners filmed for my next What's for Dinner video and a couple of them that you guys also have wanted to see. So if you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe and click your notifications. That way you don't miss out on those videos when they go live. I don't post these every every week because again I try to bring dinners either that are new or that I haven't done in a really long time to help give you guys ideas and just not show you the same old thing all the time especially all of you that watch the weekly vlogs as well you see what I eat every single night but these I show you more of how I'm actually making them so I hope these videos are helpful to you guys if they are make sure to give it a thumbs up that definitely helps me out if you aren't following me over on Instagram so that you could get more meal ideas definitely hit me up over there I'll pop my handle on the screen here at and with and of course, as always, I appreciate you guys all watching so very much and I will catch y'all in the next video. Sometimes it really feels like I lose control.